Hello everyone. Um, we're going to flip the classroom this week and so I'm going to provide some information and video here so that on Tuesday when we get together we're going to be able to get into the tools and really talk about how you can use them with kids. Uh, you'll have some time to explore and to play in um, on, on how you might use these with kids um, and I'll be there to, to kind of help with that in any way that I can. So I'm going to provide information today on two things. One is a little more about YouTube uh, and something called YouTube for Education. The second is going to be Google uh, custom search engines and how we can create individually or in groups search engines that only will allow searching uh, on sites that we say are okay. So sit back and enjoy and we'll do some work on Tuesday. Okay, the first tool that I want to show you is something called YouTube for Education. Now YouTube is a great tool um, that we talked about in at least a couple of the sessions last week um, and why that's uh, a tool that we should be using to search more than anything else. Um, that it's not just a place to find entertainment, it's not just a place to get distracted, although it's great for those things, um, but it can also be a tool for us to, uh, to actually find some information. So just in basic YouTube, um, there are some really great things, uh, and it's no different though than if we're looking at websites. So if we're doing a search, we want to make sure that we're finding the right information. So if I happen to do a search for Constitution, if we're doing some research and I'm looking for information with Constitution, the same things that I'm going to think about when I'm looking for a website, I'm going to think about here as well. So if we take the very first one, for instance, the Constitution preamble, Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock is something that we are all familiar with, uh, or most of us are probably familiar with. So I have, I, I can take that one with a little bit, um, um, know that it's something that, that would be okay for kids, or the, the information is probably going to be pretty accurate. As we go down, there are lots of other things here that, that might not. By the way, this Barney Fife one is great. Uh, talks about learning. I think it's a video that I watched uh, today that I'll probably use in a session at some point. Um, but you can find some kind of funny things that go along with what it is that you're, you're looking at also. So lots of really great things in here. Some, though, are going to be... Um, pieces that kids put together. There was one, the six principles of, US, of the U.S. Constitution. It's something that students put together. So while it seems like, as I watched it, pretty good information, uh, it would be something I certainly would want kids to go out and, and do some research on themselves. Now, what YouTube does have also, though, is they have something called youtube.com slash education. The YouTube education site uh, allows, allows for us to break it down into more educational purposes. So when you go to YouTube for Education, it lo no longer has all of the videos that are on YouTube. Uh, it has only ones for educational value. The great thing about this as we look down here is they're broken down. You can see university, you can see primary and secondary education, you can see lifelong learning, and then it goes into individual subjects. So what we can do is we can really take that information and dig down deeper. Now there aren't as many videos here. Uh, if we go and click on math, you know, we can see different math ones here. Um, some are kind of classroom, some are um, more like a Khan Academy. Um, this one actually is Khan Academy. So there aren't as many videos here, um, but there are some really good ones that will that will relate directly uh, to the subject areas that you teach. So having access to YouTube for education, maybe teaching kids that that's a place where they can go if you're really wanting them to look for, you know, for example, this mathematics and sports. You know, maybe that's something that I'm going to have them go to specifically. We're looking for how math relates to the real world or how math relates to sports. Um, I can have them go here and search that. The second thing that I wanted to share some information about is a Google custom search engine. So a Google custom search engine, what that allows us to do is create our own search engine. So if we go to google.com slash CSE, custom search engine, you will be asked uh, when you're logged in, it will give you uh, some options. I'm already logged in and you can see that I, I have some already that I've created or messed with. Um, here's, what, here's how it works. So on the left, you can see where it says new search engine. So if I click new search engine, it's going to allow me to create my own search engine. So the beauty of this is that I can either do this alone or I can invite people uh, to help with this. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But we, will, we want to go ahead and, and, and create one. So it might be 
me in my classroom. It might be me and the other social studies teachers that I work with. It might be me and every language arts teacher in the district. Uh, the beauty is that you can kind of decide how to do that. So if I create a search engine, instructional technology for the name of my search engine, this will include information on instructional technology use or sue, whatever. English. Now sites to search is where I can start putting in sites that I want um, this to search. So I'm just going to put in a couple of um, sites that I know that, that some of these are blogs and some of these are, uh, are, are websites. Um, dot org. I'm going to do um, k12.org. I'm going to do ck12.org. So some of these are just kind of basic sites. So I'm going to leave it at that. I can always come back and add more here later. So I'm going to do the standard edition, um, which is just the free version. I accept it and I hit next. When I do what I do next is then kind of pick the look it's going to have, and really what it's going to allow me to do is just have a, a custom search bar. So you can pick any of these that you would like and hit next. Now this code is something that we can then take that code and put this on our class website. So I can take my search engine, the search box, and put it on my own class website. Um, and it will, it will kind of tell you how to do all of that here. The look and feel page, which is the link they have here, will allow me to change lots of that information. Okay, so that's all there is to setting it up. When I go back to my search engines, you'll see um, some additional information. So the instructional technology one I just got, I'm going to click on control panel. In this control panel is where I can kind of set up lots of, uh, of things for my, for my particular search engine. So I can enable image search to go with this if I want to. Um, I can include related searches. Um, I can do lots of things. So I can include keywords. And so all those changes will just happen automatically. Once you have your custom search engine created, you can then do a whole bunch of other things. So if we go back and we look at this page where they are created, and I have my instructional technology, I go to control panel. Along the left hand side, you can see all kinds of options here. And the one that I want you to be aware of um, is the one that says admin accounts. When we click admin accounts, this is where we can add other teachers, other people, maybe the kids are gonna create one, um, that can access this. So it says, add a user to, to your custom search engine. This user will be able to add sites, refinements, and promotions, but won't be able to add other users or access to make money. So what this is going to do is you're going to be the owner of it. You can invite people to contribute. They will not be able to add other people to contribute also. So I just click add. I would type in an email address and hit OK, and that would take care of it. Lastly, we want to be able to have our students access the custom search engines once once we create them. So if we go back to our, our home page here where we have our search engines, um, I can go to the control panel of that search engine. And the easiest way probably is going to be uh, to actually have them access the home page. So you'll see right here in the middle uh, where it says your search engine's name and description will be shown on its Google home page. If I click that, it will take me to my own page that has my search engine. You'll see this URL is very long. We wouldn't share that. That's where we would make a, a shortened URL, either by using bit.ly or by using the goo.gl. Students can then access this. You know, I could link it directly to my website, or I could have them access that as a standalone website. The other way to do this is to kind of use that code, uh, and then you can actually have the search engine, uh, the search box on your class website. That's a little more advanced. Um, I'd be happy to help people with that, but the, the home page is really the way to go um, for, the, for the easiest use. That's it. Um, I just have one last thing I would like you to do before we meet on Tuesday. Um, I have a form that should appear right here somewhere um, with a link. 
uh, to a form that I'd like you to fill out. It kind of asks about some of the search engines uh, and web search tools that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks. So um, if you could fill that out before we meet Tuesday, that would be great. Um, and I will see you then.